Hello pilots and ground crew, welcome back to my channel again. Before I get started, uh, I'm changing my thumbnail on my YouTube channel. Uh, not the name, it'll still be George Cooper, right, but the, the picture. I had uh, a little picture of the British Model Flying Association and uh, a little quadcopter next to it. Well, I'm changing uh, that, that thumbnail picture. So, <clears throat> it's going to be a wolf, any a lone wolf, because I'm a lone wolf pilot. I know, really original that, in it? I know, really, really thought for you months and years to come up with that, it? that picture, that logo. Anyway, right, back to the video. Uh, last week, uh, I, was I was out flying with my basher, my 210. And when I say basher, I mean one that I just use for rough, rough flying, shall we say. I'm not that panicked if I crash. You know what I mean. And I noticed two of the motors were getting extremely hot, as in couldn't even bear to touch them. Well, I fixed the problem. I knew exactly what it would be, because nine times out of ten is always this problem. right? And it's always this way to fix it. But I uh, fixed the problem, but I thought to myself, it's a good little tip for new pilots who might not... Uh, well, might not know about this. So I've deliberately re-damaged, shall we say, one of the motors. You'll see when we jump to the bench. And I just thought I'd take you through how to diagnose the problem, how to fix the problem, and it is super simple and super basic. Now we'll be using a multimeter. Now I don't. You should all own multimeters if you're in this hobby. It's one of the most important tools you should have on your workbench. But let's just assume new pilots. <coughs> Excuse me, just to show new pilots, they've only just got one, they don't understand all the bits and pieces on it. So when I'm talking about the multimeter, I've also kept the terminology to the absolute basics and kept it as simple as I possibly can. However, uh, any questions, just leave a comment. Okay then, right, let's get down to the bench and uh, show you how to deal with hot motors. One thing I'll say, I know I mentioned it in the video because I've already recorded it, Right, but I will say, if your motor is at the field, you land and they're getting really hot, stop flying. Stop flying. Don't think, oh, it's fine. If they're getting so hot, you can't bear to hold on to them. Right, stop flying. You're going to cause a lot of damage. But this is a really quick fix. If you've got a multimeter in your backpack, you can fix it at the field. It's that simple. Okay then, let's get to the bench and I'll show you what I did. Cheers. Right then pilots, first things first, what is called, oh I'll tell you what, no the first thing is if you're flying and you find out one of your motors or more than one, in my case it was two, but uh, are getting hot hot, as in you can't, you can't hold them, they get the warm, you're thinking the warm and you think yeah a bit warm, but if they're getting, as in the too hot, stop flying straight away or you'll bugger them up, burn them out if it's not too late, okay, right. Now, why are they getting hot? Nine times out of ten, it's because you've got a mounted screw, right, going in and touching the coils, right, and that's it. It's as simple as that. But how do you find out if that is the problem? And this should always be your first go-to check. Right, if your motor's getting burning up before you think strip your motors, change ACs, doing all that sort of palaver and crap and stuff. Do this check first, because 9 times out of 10, it's simply that one of your screws holding your motor is catching the motor or the coil, and it's causing a problem. Now, how do you check it? Like I said, you'll need a multimeter. Right, now I'm going to explain this next bit real simple, in case somebody's never used one before, right, or they don't understand the terminology. As you look at the multimeter, right, you will find a little symbol right that looks like oh, a speaker almost and an upside down christmas tree oh man but it looks like a speaker where you're going to get sound out of it's always uh, a different sort of feature to everything else on the multimeter everything else seems to make sense you've got voltages your ohms and blah 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 and then you get this one funny looking thing right like I say, it's got like a speaker symbol, right? And I'm not going to go into detail, I'm keeping it simple like I do all my videos where you want to put your multimeter onto that symbol. 
And what happens then is, it gets, how can I explain it? If to wire, if, there you go, if I do all this and just be quiet, you should hear it beep. Hopefully you heard that beep. In other words, so if I went to the ground to the ground on a flight control board, it will beep. If I went to positive to the ground, it shouldn't beep because that signal should not be connected. The positive shouldn't run through to the ground. The ground runs to the ground and the positive runs to the positive. And what this does, if it beeps, it's telling you the wires or the, the signal from the wires that you see, it's not exactly a signal, but the signal from the wires are, are connecting and you don't want that. So if you're checking summer and you put one on red and one on black and there's a beep, right, you've got a problem, you've got something across somewhere. But that's another story. Getting back to this one now. All you need to do, right, Check all your motors obviously, but uh, let's just say it's this one motor because I've deliberately re-damaged, shall we say, this motor. So I know exactly what's wrong with it and how to fix it instantly, but we're going to go through it. Right, so let's just say this motor, right, we've checked all the other motors for argument's sake, but this is the only one getting hot, right? So what you do is you turn your quad and you pick any screw you want, any screw, it doesn't matter. And you plug, your, well, hold your multimeter up to the screw, all right? Hold it up to the screw. And while you're holding it into the screw, this is awkward. <coughs> I usually do this on my knee, but so on camera it's a bit awkward. Where your ESCs join, right, where the motor joins to your ESC. And this works in a, with a 4-in-1 four, four ESC as well. Right. Simply touch your other connector to any of the ESC, any of the wires that connect to the ESC. Nothing. Hope you can hear that, but it started beeping when I touched that middle cable. I really hope you can hear that, but you'll just have to trust me if not, it's beeping. So now I know there's something wrong with this one. If I go through the rest and show you, nothing will happen. All right? Because, well, I'm not going to because I've sorted it. All right? But I know now, let's turn that back to off. Move this out the road. I know, well, I'll be bringing that back again in a minute. That was stupid, George. I know now there's something wrong with this. Right? And I know it's one of the screws because we had, all right, uh, the multimeter touching one of the screws. Now I happen to already know it's that screw. But what you need to do is go around each screw. I'll start with this one because I know it's the right one. Go around each screw and take it halfway out and then recheck it. I'll get the multimeter again to show you. Might as well show you the full demo. Might as well show you the full thing. And then do exactly what you did before, put it on one of the screws, it doesn't matter, any one. Right, uh, trying to get this in shot. Right. And then do your same check what you just did before, and if you've got the right screw, go through all three. No beeps, no beeps at all. Right. So now I know. Now I can turn that off and move it out the road. I know it was definitely that screw. Now it might not have been that screw, it might have beeped. So I tighten that screw back up, move on to the next screw. If it doesn't beep, tighten that screw up. You know what I mean? Just go around until you get to the point where you do that check again and there's no beep. And then you know you've got the correct screw. So because I know it's this screw, I could go get a smaller screw. Right, I'm taking this out completely. I could get a smaller screw to put in there, but three screws are plenty. I'll run that one on three screws. Right. Uh, oh yeah, that was the other one that had a problem. That's why that one's running on three screws. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so I know it was that screw. Now I've taken it out, 
and I fly again the motor will not get hot because it's not catching. Now I've tried to keep that simple but at the same time if you're a brand new pilot a couple of things might have just gone over your head then so please please leave a comment feel free to ask all right I'm not going to go through it again all right but basically just put the multimeter on any screw right touch it against your ESC where the cable connects to your ESC all right go through all three if nothing happens go on to the next motor, the next motor and the next motor and the second you hear a beep then you have to start unloosening screws one at a time and then unloosen one, check it right if it still beeps, fasten that back up unloosen the other screw, check it if it stopped beeping, you know, that's the little bugger causing the problem and then the next time you fly you'll notice your motors are not getting hot and you're off and running. Like I say, if you want to put a smaller screw in, that's fine. But th these things will hold quite happily with three screws. But always use Loctite. And I recommend the blue. I've heard some people say use the red. Don't use the bloody red. You only use red Loctite on something that you're wanting to lock. And never, ever touch again. Never, ever undo again. Right? Because it's a really solid permanent locking solution. Blue Loctite is extremely strong all right but at the same time you can get the screw out again in the future if you need to uh, ask any helicopter pilot they'll all be using blue loctite now i've said that i'll get five comments saying i use red and i fly helicopters all right and you have to think a helicopter is shaking about a hell of a lot more than a bloody quad all right think about the size of the prop the, uh. okay then right i'm starting to waffle a bit one last thing I'll tell you straight away, I said it at the beginning, if you're flying and you notice your motors are getting really hot to the touch, stop flying straight away or you will damage, well damage the motor basically. Right? If you catch it in time, do this little fix and the motor will be fine and you'll be off and running. Like I say, any questions at all, please leave a comment in the description. Okay then pilots and ground crew, thanks for watching and no there was something else i yeah no no that's it <laughs> bloody hell he's back he's back he's lost it he's back okay then pilots and ground crew thanks for watching and cheers